Now, I know in my last video update, um, we were a little saddened and uh, it just didn't look like this project was going to move forward. So I said, to hell with it. We're going to do something. We're going to we're going to try to bring this into the finish line. So I want to show you side by side a comparison. This is the first round of paintwork. This is the second. What I did was I said, you know what? Let's just let's just start over. I stripped the paint completely off, which took a lot of the original metallic finish off as well, brought it down to a black plastic. I then washed it thoroughly and applied new paint. This is not the same paint we had before. This is a Rust-Oleum satin nickel metallic, and I think it looks a lot better. It's a lot smoother. And because I brought it down to the, to the bare plastic, I was able to get out a lot of the defects that were in the material. So, you know, the chips and stuff that were, that were there. So the next step is we're going, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to print off a bunch of decals. We're going to try the decal process. I'm going to put the decal here. I have the decal paper in my, um, in my office upstairs, my office in the bedroom upstairs, and I'm going to print them on, I'm going to use a laser printer because uh, laser toner, uh, I feel has a much more stable, um, it'll, it'll be a much more stable finish than using um, inkjet ink. And I hope that didn't roll into the paint. No, it, it, it actually did. I must have touched this thing and not realized it. I've got a fingerprint right there. Well, I gotta get that. I'm gonna give it one more coat of paint to get that fingerprint out of there. And then we'll let it dry for a couple of days again. We'll try that again. Now this one, this is the Body Sonic Amp. It is, you know, it is what it is. I'm going to strip this next and we're gonna do the same thing. Give it a couple of days to dry. And uh, we're also gonna clear coat it. All right, guys. So this is the, um, we're kind of on the halfway point here. Um, I've got this stripped and repainted. This time I used a, um, it's a Rust-Oleum Universal, um, which is a very different product from their typical spray paint offerings. Um, this particular um, product line comes in a lot more of a variety and uh, some very nice metallics. Some of the best metallics I've seen come out of the spray can um, come out of this product line. So what I used here is a Rust-Oleum um, satin nickel. So it has a satin finish to it when it's not cleared. Um, so the satin nickel paint, um, it sprays on a little bit, uh, a little bit finer. The the the, uh, the coating is much more uniform on this uh, than what I was using, which was a Duplicolor product, I believe. Duplicolor Chrome. This is not pretending to be Chrome, uh, so therefore it looks better. Anyway, what we're going to be doing with this is um, now that we have a nice color chosen, it looks absolutely stunning. I did a better job on this paint job than I did the previous one. This is, uh, again, we stripped it down. So we're not spraying over, you know, old layers of uh, clear coat and all this other bullshit. So what we're going to do is I'm going to move forward with my decals. I'm going to put one decal here, the Pioneer decal with a compact disc logo. I'm also going to reproduce a couple of text decals. I'm going to try to. We're going to see how this goes. And I'm going to put one. There's a Body Sonic decal that goes right over here. And there's, um, I forget what goes here, automatic level control, I think. And that's going to go here. And um, yeah, we're going to do that. We're just going to do it. I'm going to probably even put in a select, uh, source select decal over here as well. So I stripped all the finish off of mine after failing to repaint it once already. And it was uh, stripped down to bare plastic. And then I recoated it with a... Um, with a satin finish nickel Rust-Oleum product. In doing that, I have lost the decals, 
So I actually reprinted, I actually recreated these decals from photographs. And I got even got the color just right on these. So these are recreations, and then I ran them off in a laser printer. Why laser? Well, simple answer is um, the toner used on laser printers is more um, more resistant to fading because it is a it is actually a powdered pigment. So um, I wouldn't do this on an inkjet. So I actually picked up a brand new photo cutter that we're gonna use to, to cut this down. And uh, first time using this thing. Let's see how good it can do. I'm gonna line it up just right. Okay. Actually, what I should do is cut the sheet in half. So I picked up some new scissors. Now, this could go very badly. Um, this could go. This could go very badly uh, because I have never worked with these decals before. This is a first for me. Um, I'm no. I'm no stranger to water slide decals. I've used them um, for, of course, model cars that I've worked on as a child. But I also. I also used a, uh, a full, like a large format water slide decal to restore a 1937 Philco uh, radio. And uh, that worked pretty well, actually. All right. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut one of these Pioneer decals off. Making sure we, what we wanna do is when we're doing this, we want to use the least we want us we want it to be the smallest we as small as we can get it and okay so that failed uh, <laughs> apparently it cuts on that line that's okay this is why i printed so many of them so now we know that all right let's try this again so it cuts on that line right there Good to know, good to know. All right. Oh God, this is hard to see. Let's double check that, okay, okay, okay. So it cuts, all right, I get it now. I get it, all right. So I just cut that label in half, or that decal right in half. I swear I didn't mean to, all right. So now we're going to cut the other edge off. Okay. Interesting how that worked out, but there you go. And now we just need to cut. All right. Oh, I, okay. I get it. I get it. All right. Why am I doing it with a knife edge tool like this? Reason being, um, we want the least amount of, um, of overhang that we can get. Okay, so that's one decal right there. Now, if you print these with an inkjet printer, What's going to happen is, um, unless you're using Epson ink, unless you're using Epson ink, the um, the ink will actually begin to dissolve in the water. Um, HP ink, which is what I have, um, is not water. It's not waterproof by any stretch. Um, it's quite the opposite, actually. So not being waterproof, um, you're going to end up with, um, again, a lot of ink washing out. So if you print these on an inkjet printer, um, you're going to get 
like I said, you're going to get ink washing. So that's another reason for using a, a laser printer. I've got a set of uh, kind of a commercial grade tweezer set. And I've got a few different ones to choose from. I'm trying to find one with a blunt tip. I don't want to scratch the decals. But I fear that might be inevitable. I've also got myself a little, little container of lukewarm water. That's basically room temperature. If you don't know what lukewarm means, basically room temperature is what you want. I'm going to use these curved tweezers. And we're going to let the decal sit in the water. I've got a, uh, a small brush. Now it's going to curl onto itself. That's okay. But when it starts to separate, that's when we want to lay it on. And don't worry, I've got enough of these decals printed so I can screw this up as many times as I want to without any repercussions. Just let it soak until the, yep, yeah, okay, starting to go. So we're gonna use our tweezers to pick it up. And there is our decal. may already be ruined let's see what we got here oh, let's fold it over on the back there And actually looks really good. It looks really good. I'm sliding all over the place here. Look at that. Look at that. Now that glue might be completely wiped out. Um, Oh God, I got an, I got a corner that folded down. Just like that. So step two, step two is going to be um, clear coat. My fear is that all the glue is gone at this point and it's not going to adhere very well. Oh, that looks, that looks, that looks pretty good. Wow. I wasn't expecting that. So there's another decal that we need to apply onto the stereo face. Now this stuff, you want to let it dry. It takes, it's going to take forever to dry it. And we want to get all the air bubbles out. Use a sable brush or something similar. Yeah, I can feel the tackiness. It's still glue. There's still glue there. Now... Okay, so I did mention about using an inkjet printer on this, and here's what you need to know. If you use an inkjet printer, uh, what's going to happen is the um, you have to clear coat it, okay? You, you have to clear coat it before you get the labels wet, or the, uh, the decals. So clear coat before... After you print, and you're going to want to use a clear coat that is compatible with whatever you use to clear coat the entire faceplate when the time is right. Uh, we're going to be clear coating this with a 2K clear. 
and um, it's a product that I've used in the past for other projects and it works really well. So we're gonna put this aside and you wanna let that dry, just let it sit for a couple of days and uh, then you wanna clear it. You have to clear coat these, otherwise they will fall off. Um, they will dry up and fall off. So I'm gonna need, which one is it? The power and source decal is the one I need next. So I'm gonna get my, my precision cutter and we're gonna cut one of those. If anybody wants this, um, this uh, set of lab of decals. Here's what you got to do. Um, I'll drop my email. At, uh, uh, actually, put it in the comments. If you want one of these, throw it in the comments. Oh yeah, by the way, this edge was cut with scissors, so we're not going to use that. It's not a it's not a true edge anymore. But if you want a set of these, you can print them yourself. Um, I suggest maybe bringing the uh, the set to maybe a um, maybe a Kinkos or something. And uh, if you don't have access to a color laser printer, um, bring it to Kinkos and have them run them off. What you could do, I mean, sure you can try your luck with an inkjet printer, but all those cautions that I mentioned uh, earlier, those all still apply. All right. Okay, so we got our nice true edge there. That looks really good. I wasn't sure what it was going to look like. And I and at the last minute, I darkened the print. I changed the color a little bit to more of a brown versus a uh, an orange. And that was a smart move. But what I'll do is if you want this set, um, here's what you do. You, you just send me a message, a comment, <clears throat> and I will happily provide you the file needed to do this. No charge. Let's, uh, let's save as many of these radios as we can and not get too greedy. Um, and I will happily provide you the files that you need. No questions asked. All right, so we need to we need to really trim this one up because there's not a lot of room here. So so much for that that laser cut edge, huh? All right. Now the decals, I or the decals, the um the actual print, I essentially looked at some photos and tried to copy as best as I could uh, what these were supposed to look like. Um, I looked at photos not only of my stereo but of others and I just used the tools at my disposal. I designed it in GIMP and uh, I think this one got ruined. Be careful, this stuff is very, very delicate. It's basically, um, uh, what, are they, what did I say this was? Like collagen, I think. <laughs> All right, that, that one got ruined, so we're going to do another one. Again, we got a lot of tries. Now, as far as getting the paper, to get the paper, um, you can get that um, off of uh, Amazon, eBay. They don't sell the stuff in the stores. I'm not sure why. I couldn't find it anywhere locally to me. But it's just standard water slide decal paper. Very easy to get. Very inexpensive. Um, the five sheets is gonna run you, well, it's inexpensive in relation to, well, other things. Some of these smaller labels are going to be a little difficult to uh, to work with. I'm just going to s uh, share that now. 
I'm not going to get that knife edge that I'm looking for on this one. It's all right. That's okay. Um, you want to make sure that you buy the laser paper, the laser water slide decal paper. Um, there is a difference. This stuff can take the heat, whereas the inkjet stuff can't. All right. Okay. I'm going to be very delicate as to not damage, wrinkle, or otherwise play with this material. You don't even want to touch it. It just wants to roll onto itself. Let's get it on the surface. Let me position it with our brush. Or our fingers, whatever works. Make sure it's nice and centered. I've got to fold over over here. I think uh, oops. Broke it. Do it again. Do it until it's right. Do it until it's perfect. You've got material. All right. You're going to find that actual print is stronger than the backing. Now you might be thinking, well, what about stickers? Why don't I print out stickers? Well, here's why you don't want to do that. You can get self-adhesive labels or what they call pressure sensitive labels made. The problem with that is the pressure sensitive um, the substrate that is the actual um, the plastic that uh, pressure sensitive labels are made of um, it doesn't um, sometimes they have a hard time adhering to certain materials and okay we got it we got it to be very careful. Be very, very careful. These small little ones. It, so yeah, hold on. Let me concentrate. That's, that's just fine. Okay. Okay. That really looks good. Could be better, but sometimes with those difficult ones, you just have to accept what the good Lord's given you. Uh, you just have to accept it. Um, I 
I can't seem to get the C and the E separated. There we go. There we go. There we go. I don't manhandle it too much. Okay. Now that one's done. Let me see if I can get a better angle on this. Here we go. That almost looks factory. What do you think? Almost. Almost. Okay. Perfect. Um, okay, let's do the uh, the lower unit. And then I'm going to quit while I'm ahead. 6009. Yeah, I got plenty of these. That one was close, but it wasn't good enough. These just want to fold over onto themselves. That's the real problem, real tragedy here. Okay. Made this one a little bit small. I'm going to dip it in the water. But yeah, having a functioning CD and cassette deck to me is what really matters when you're uh, displaying a car from the 90s. Um, it really does. There we go. Get the, get the brush ready. There we go. And that's how it's done. Gonna use the brush to uh, to weasel it into place. It's right about where I remember it, and I'm gonna just kind of hold it in position with the end of my tweezers and brush the water out of it. Any excess water. There we go. 6009. It's a little crooked. Not too bad though. Look at that. I think I just pulled off the impossible, my friends. I have restored almost to factory condition. Still have to clear coat it. I gotta emphasize, we still have to clear coat it. But for the most part, I don't think it's gonna get better than this. Um, if I don't clear coat it, again, these are just gonna fall off. And uh, they're just gonna get ruined. So let's see it together. Oh my God, this is heavenly. Look at that. Of course, we still have tape on the uh, on the black here. That's fine. That can stay there. But look at that. Mwah. I'm in the middle of replacing the laser uh, body. Here's the old one. Um, so this one is uh, probably, as I mentioned before, this may be the only remaining unused laser body left on planet Earth <laughs> for this model. Um, and here we are. The reason we're replacing this is I felt that the original one had begun to lose power. And uh, I figured it couldn't hurt. If I can get a replacement brand new, why the hell not, right? Why not do that? Why not waste our time, effort, and money? Anyway, so yeah, I gotta get the uh, cables routed correctly. Easier said than done, I guess. Let's see if we can do this. 
If I am not mistaken, that's going to go here. Yeah, that 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 uh, that goes there. The old one looks like we can see how it was folded. So it uh, went in this direction here, like that, and then this guy. Somewhere around here. But where? I think it went like that. Yeah, something like that. And then this guy is poked right into there, the pick. Keep it in place. There we are. Now, we still don't have audio out of this thing. That's kind of an ongoing issue. And I, um, what I'm going to do is I won't be able to test the CD player for sound quality. What I can do is check it for um, playability. So a CD player that's not running correctly, you can actually tell just by listening to the servos what's going on without even hearing a single note. And uh, it'll tell you a lot about the, uh, the condition of, of the unit. There we go. And um, so that I'm kind of banking on that because I'm not going to go pull my car out. Ooh, I got, I got uh, misrouted there. There we go. So this thing should be able to slide back and forth freely like that. Okay. Um, what was I saying? So I'm not going to pull my car out of hibernation just to test this. That would be a fool's errand. I don't want to do that. So that's not what I'm going to do. So this should go around like that. Like so. Where it goes over the gauntlet. And then it connects into here. Like so. Looks like shiny side down or shiny side up. Here, allow me. You're welcome. Figure if I'm gonna put any effort into this thing at all, I'm gonna go full hog wild. I'm gonna go nuts. And that's just what I did. And then that slid underneath here, just like that. Ah, ah well, there you go. Now, I hope that in all that jostling and poking and prodding that we didn't make anything worse. That's still a very real possibility, you know? It's still a very real possibility that we made it worse. We'll find out in a few minutes. As for the routing of this guy, well, well, that's that's gonna be. Does this have an adhesive tab on it now? Now that uh, that thing. Oh, you know what? I think it went over here. Yeah, you can see where it uh, had been routed around this way. I think I would have taken better notes. Well, that would just make too much sense, now, wouldn't it? 
Yeah, I think it goes around like that. So then when we put the deck in like this, that should just about line up. I think we have to fold it back over itself. Nah. figure this out okay I figured it out um, there's one little detail though the original one doesn't have this metal clip on it so I believe that jumper is supposed to come off that could be for alignment purposes um, either during the assembly of the or the construction of the, of the laser unit or something else um, we really don't have that information I do have a service manual for the unit, but it doesn't seem to cover laser assembly replacement, but it does cover some testing procedures. I'm gonna take, take a quick glance at that and see if there's something that I need to know. Well, I'm sure there is, but I need to confirm whether that's true or not. I'm gonna plug the unit in. And again, we have no means of audio verification but that's okay so I'm just making my electrical connections now uh, I don't have a faceplate I could use um, my my faceplate is uh, currently disassembled so I'm going to use the faceplate from the donor unit which is which is funnily enough the original faceplate to my CD player. So, um, be like a little little reunion, a mother and child reunion. It's only a uh, motion away. Um, so let's uh, let's just toss in a couple of screws, and uh, we'll be on our way. Here we got power. Put the CD in. Now this is an ultimate test. But actually, I'll put a real one in first. This way, I don't get fully disappointed all at once, right? It's playing. Unfortunately, we can't hear it, but will it advance? Yep. It slows down as it should. Motor's a little noisy. Nine tracks. Back to track one. This is track nine. It's playing. Now let's check for skipping. We're beating the shit out of it. Yeah, it's not skipping. That's a skip. That's a hard skip. That's a hard boom. No CD player is going to go through that. I just wish we could hear the sound. I'll have to figure out a way to do this. Now, if you listen carefully, you can hear the stepping of the... Um, What happens is the laser floats. Okay, it floats back and forth. So what it does is it's gonna it's going to magnetically position itself because it's it's actually suspended by a set of magnets that 
will slowly, one side of the magnet loses power, the other side gains. And that allows the assembly to very precisely track. So the lens is tracking the CD. And once it reaches a limit, it advances the belt-driven motor that was inside there. Let me show you what that looks like. It advances this little motor right here. See how it drives a screw? It advances it just a, just a, just a hair. Just a little bit, and then it starts to track all over again. But it's actually playing it. And you can hear it, the, that, that's the lens body tracking it. It's, it's moving the lens assembly of the lens body just a little bit. It steps it. But it's not skipping. Unless the car hits a really good bump. But it should be able to, here, I should be able to pick this thing up and float it around without any real issue. I think we're good. Now to figure out a way to get sound out of this thing. Hmm. That's gonna be easier said than done. I, I can't seem to get anything out of these speaker wires at all. The amp's just not turning on. So now it's returning. I want to try to uh, quiet those gears down a little bit. So now it's resetting the laser position as it's supposed to. Let's see if we can quiet down those eject gears. I'm going to put a little bit of this polyolefin grease. Let's put a dab on these gears. Cause they're just gnashing, gnashing. Put a little bit of that in there. That doesn't make much of a difference, does it? I think what I'm going to do is pull the mech back out and uh, I'm going to start lubricating a few points. So let's put in a, um, this is a burned CD. This is what it wouldn't play before. This is a CD that was burned on a 650 megabyte CD R. Here we go. Let's see what she does. It would outright reject it. I think it's playing. I think it's playing it. Interesting. I'm going to show you what CD wobble looks like. So if you look closely at the disc, you can see that the hub wobbles quite a bit. Now what that's gonna do is that's gonna cause this laser to dance around as if it can track it. Now if it fails to track the disc, if it fails to find a groove to play on, it'll, it'll spit it right back out. But this thing's got massive wobble and you can see, it looks like the entire mechanism is shimmying back and forth. But that's just an illusion. It's not. That's the sign of a poorly manufactured disc. Well, they all have some wobble, but that looks like a lot. How many tracks are on this? 
Let me see what I burned. I believe this is a Martin Denny CD. Which should have... No, nope, it's Les Baxter. And it should have a total of 12 tracks. Let's go back to track 12. It's playing it. I think it likes it, Mikey. Look at that. What wonders. Well, I just did a quick test to see if I could once again get something out of the amp by hooking up some headphones to it. And the, the, the reality is this. I mean, both head units do the exact same thing. No audio. So, uh, metal loss as to what, what might be causing that. It has to be with the way it's wired internally um, against what I'm trying to do here. But the good news is it tracks CDs. If this was an utter failure transplant, what would happen was it would immediately reject the disc. I wouldn't be able to skip tracks. We don't know what it sounds like. And the correct way to determine that is either with a listening test or with an oscilloscope. Um, there are testing procedures with oscilloscopes where you can actually see the waveform being produced by the laser. So it is uh, just one of those things. So I'm gonna have to just finish the job, put it up on a shelf somewhere and when the time comes, hook it up. Now, one of my viewers suggested it might be a, a chassis, like something in here isn't grounded. And you know something? You might be onto something. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna finish what I was doing here and I'm gonna take and put the covers on and see if maybe, like for example, I just noticed that this ground right here isn't hooked up to anything right now. Think about that. I wonder. All right. So I just, uh, I think, you know, I think you might be onto something, bud. Let's give this a try. So I got some headphones here. And uh, I'm willing to try anything once. Maybe that was a critical ground internal to the chassis. Could be... I'm going to tune it to AM, FM, uh, FM 101.1, which is 101.1 where I live. You can get a signal without an antenna. There we go. The volume cranked. Let's see what we get. You just might be right. Or you could be wrong, and I think you're wrong. Yeah, I should be getting something. Okay, so that's not the case, but hey, thanks for playing. So what I'm gonna do next for my uh, for my final act, did I pull the CDs out? No, there's still one in there, pull it out. Keep that out. I'm gonna pull the CD mech again, one last time. And we're going to take a look at uh, lubricating a few slide points just for uh, just for longevity's sake. It would be helpful to take all the screws out, don't you think? Oh, Oreo, don't fight your brother. Okay, pop that guy off. We got to pull the faceplate. Not completely, we just need to pull it off a little bit. That's enough to free up about that much space. Actually, you know what? I don't think I'm gonna do that. I, I don't think I'm gonna do that. What I'm gonna do though, is I'm gonna clean all the gunk off the other side of this plate, if I can. Because that gunk is gonna land on something and I, uh, and I don't want that. So we're gonna take it out anyway. You guys must be thinking, Jesus Christ, this guy is going through all the effort just so that he can listen to Nirvana tapes with the top down. And you know what? You would be correct. You would be correct in that assumption. That is exactly what I'm trying to do here. 
I want to relive the 90s, my friends. The 90s was a good time. You know, it's funny, my dad, he always pined about the 70s. How much time, how much of a good time he had. Now, my dad was born in 63, so he's not that old. I mean, he's, I guess, I guess in the grand scheme of things, he's, well, he's up there. But born in 1963, he was a child of the 70s. And he spends a lot of his time reminiscing about the 70s. And I remember saying to myself, man, I will never be like him. I will never, I will never look back on this time that I live in now, the 90s. I was born in 84. Um, I'm never going to go back and look upon this time as something I'll ever miss. And you know something? You might find yourself saying the same thing. And guess what? That time will come. I mean, depending on how good or bad... Well, I guess nobody's going to look back on 2021 and say, gee, what a great time that was. At least nobody with a sense of self will do that. Um, anyway, so we're going to just look, look for any slide points where lubrication might be a little bit of a benefit, you know? Anything that slides gets some kind of luby lube. Now this is polyolefin grease. It's actually kind of a universal grease for transport mechanisms and laser printers and the like. Um, good stuff. It'll last a good long time. You don't want to overdo it though. No, you don't want to overdo it. I put a, by the way, this uh, rail right here that the uh, the laser body slides on and the motor. Um, that rail was actually sticky. It was a little bit sticky. So I went ahead and I took that rail off and I cleaned it up and I put a couple drops of clock oil on it, which is basically a, it's a synthetic oil and it's designed to cling onto things. Real good stuff. Um, it's great for pivot points and other things. Um, so that's something you might want to try. I would say that if I were to go back and do this all over again, that would be the first thing I try. Like if I were just doing a little bit of troubleshooting, the first thing I would do would be to try. We take a look at that. Yeah. A little bit of clock oil. Good stuff. Um, let's see what else we got going on in here. So, Way deep inside, way deep inside, there's a little pad right in the, uh, it's designed to stop the CD from spinning. If you look in this, uh, can't really get it in focus. The top, the, 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 there's a stabilizing wheel that the seat that, that clamps onto the CD and it's got a foam pad that is fully degraded into nothing. What we want to do is you want to remove that foam pad. It's not really doing us any good. Because it's so degraded, it's it's going to cause that pad, or it's going to cause the um, little bit of stiction as it further falls apart. So we want to make sure we do something about that. Um, just, you know, just heads up on that one. And uh, there we go. We'll put a little bit of that there. A little dollop of daisy. You don't want to go nuts with the grease, though. I mean, it's good to have. It's good for the the mind, the body, and the soul. But you don't want to go crazy with this stuff. Because it can, it can if overused, just like anything, uh, can cause problems down the road for you. And we don't want that. You know, we don't want trouble. We don't want trouble. I should probably do the same thing to the, to the cassette mechanism, but I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to touch it. I'm not going to touch it. It works fine. We're not going to mess with that. Now, I'm going to need a, a new one of these uh, little swab things. And I'm going to use that to dissolve and remove the rest of that foam pad before it causes us any major problems. So we're going to use uh, slide our, our mech. Transport thing. 
in there. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use some 91% ISO. So yeah, uh, I bet it's a good thing I removed that jumper because um, there's a reason that this wasn't installed on the uh, on the new one or on the old one, and we don't know what that reason is. But I'm gonna keep it. I, I bet I bet it's actually there to be one of those gotchas. You know, the manufacturer put it there just in case he didn't read the uh, manual. <laughs> you put it in, turn it on, and kaboom. I uh, wouldn't doubt it for a second. Kaboom. Uh-oh. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> wouldn't that be something? Wouldn't be wouldn't be uh, out of the ordinary though. It would not be surprising that they would do a thing like that. No, it's actually probably there for alignment purposes and probably was supposed to be removed during manufacture. So Here, I'm going to pop a CD in there just to okay. so do that. So now what we got to do is do some surgical surgery. So we know where that pad is. It's right under here. So I'm going to take me some... Uh, I have an open bottle of alcohol. I will use that instead. Yeah, this is the one. I want to remove the rest of that pad. Now we could replace it. We could put something else in its place, but I'm not gonna. So what it's supposed to do is, as the CD ejects, it's supposed to stop it from spinning, so that it's not coming out like a shooting star or a Chinese star. But look at that. That's what it turns into. And I noticed that it's it's cover oh, it's it's actually coating the top side of our um, CD hub wheel. And we're gonna clean it off. Let's clean it off. We don't want any of that nastiness. In there. What we don't want, and this is what I'm doing this, we don't want that pad to disintegrate to the point where it begins to drop little bits of, um, of uh, decayed foam rubber onto the CD lens, because that would make for a rough time. I don't want that. I also, what I also don't want is I don't want it to land on the CD and then coat the exit roller. Again, common sense. Let's see how we did. And I'm looking in there. I still see remnants of it. But it means we got to go in for the kill. we got to remove the rest of it. Another swab. But we've got most of it out of there. Um, we just want to, and I can't seem to get the backer out of there. There's a backer, a, an adhesive backer that it attaches to, and that, without major disassembly, I don't think I'll be able to get that out. But this is working. This is working just fine. Okay. Take another look. Mm, that's better. So, should we put something back? Yes, but I don't know what. I don't know what I would put there. Um, yeah, I, 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 I'm at a loss as to what that would be. But I'm going to put a little bit more lubrication in a few, a few key spots here. Uh, just as a case you want to know, the swabs that I'm using, these are medical swabs. You can get these on, um, you can get them anywhere, really. I think you can actually get them in certain pharmacies as well. Um, they're very nice to have for projects like this. Um, they're actually quite handy. Um, 
because they, unlike regular swabs, unlike the, the ones that you get at the grocery store, um, these don't fray and leave chunks of cotton everywhere. That's not what they do. Oop, I see a good opportunity there for a little bit of lube. Like I said, you don't want to use so much of this stuff that it makes a fucking mess. Just enough to uh, to keep things moving. I'm going to see here. Just stay moving. But we've made so much progress with this thing so far. We're in the home stretch. This thing is totally savable. And, um, and just to think that most of these ended up in the garbage can because, well, it just doesn't play. It doesn't play my CD, so it's got to go in the trash. That's where, that's where you put things that don't work. Throw them away. You can always buy a new one until you can't. I've been looking at new vehicles lately and um, not really seriously looking at buying, but just kind of looking around to see what's out there. And none of the vehicles that I'm interested in buying have uh, CD players. Sign of the times. My 2017 Santa Fe will be the last new vehicle I, or newer vehicle that I buy with a CD player. I didn't buy it new, I bought it used. But, um, but it was only a couple years old, three years old when I got it. But yeah, I never thought I'd live to see the day that CDs would be obsolete. No, who am I kidding? Of course I knew that would happen. You have to be foolish not to think that that wouldn't happen eventually. But time moves on, technology changes, consumer preferences change. You know, manufacturers no longer want to put uh, features in vehicles that just aren't getting used. And for that, I don't blame them. I really don't. I mean, it makes no sense to put a CD player in a new vehicle now. Who here is, besides you guys, see how it, it bounced up like that? Okay, that pad is supposed to... Okay, so now I know what, uh, what purpose it serves. Let me do that again. So you can see... Now watch this. Listen carefully. So what it's doing is it's cushioning the blow for this thing as it comes up. What could we do to fix that? What could we stick in there? Um, let me think about that for a moment. I'll get right back to you. But we should put something. We absolutely should put something in this place. The question is what? It's not necessary. wouldn't hurt all right folks i got it i got it Maria, right i got it here's what we're gonna do i got all this felt a lot of it it's a pretty good sized fairly dense felt and we're gonna use felt because that's what i have so i need to make some clearance so i'm gonna put the disc back in there Okay. Let's just load it back in. So we're going to take a piece of felt and we're going to just glue it in. Okay. So what I want to do, maybe stick one piece of felt in there. For glue, I'm going to use Aileen's Tacky Glue. I think that'll work. I got a better idea. I have a surplus of 3M VHB tape. That's this double-sided stuff. Use it for like iPhones and things. What I'm going to do... I'm going to drop those scissors. Hold on. What do I do with them? I got some VHB adhesive. Um, I have an awful lot of this stuff. And 
uh, we're going to use this. Yeah. Now, the reason I, I didn't initially, I knew I had this stuff, but I wasn't going to go for it at first. Because my fear is, with heat exposure, it will um, it will sag and fall off. But this is the HB. This, this is good stuff. So we put a little bit of that on some felt, and I think that's what they would use in a modern unit anyway. So let's just give it a try. Yeah. Okay. But yes, I actually am looking at possibly, possibly buying a new vehicle. Um, I don't need one, but getting bored with my Santa Fe. And uh, no. the reality is I um, I actually have a very pressing need for a pickup. No, not some big ass four wheel drive thing. Just a little two wheel drive, just a little yard truck. Um, a lot of the stuff that I want to do with the house requires access to a truck. I don't have a truck. Uh, I do have a nice little SUV, which I'm happy with. I'm very happy with my little, my little Santa Fe. But it would be very nice. It would be, it would be dreamy, if you will, if I had a truck. But... And the thing is, the way trade-ins are right now, I would make a mint off of my little Santa Fe. Here, let me uh, get a better angle. So what I'm doing is I'm gonna use this spoon, inverted, and we're going to adhere it on the bottom like this. Make sure you get good adhesion. Good, 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 good. You know, they didn't have 3M VHB when they made this. <laughs> I think they had a very similar product, but it wasn't it wasn't the same, man. Because I'm a perfectionist, I'm gonna take a razor blade and try to trim this down. But yeah, I'm just looking at, uh, actually looking at a Tacoma. And like I said, the price of a four by is just not worth it to me. The thing is, in New England, people think they need four wheel drive for some reason. You don't need four wheel drive. I used to commute in a two wheel drive. I actually drove a two wheel drive truck in a major snowstorm. Never had a problem with it. Here we go. Listen. See, it worked. Now it didn't. It didn't. It just cushioned the blow. It just cushioned the blow, and it didn't cause it to, to vibrate incessantly. Um, the disc should actually be stopped by the time it hits that point anyway. And we're going to demonstrate this in the mechanism in just a moment. But yeah, I've been considering getting a pickup for a while, and I think, you know, the market's not going to get any better anytime soon. You know, I'm just... You're dreaming if you think that things are going to get cheaper, because they're not. No matter who's in the office, no matter what happens. Um, it's not like they're going to suddenly knock, you know, a couple thousand dollars off the price of a new car because, you know, because the other party's in the office. You're, you're kidding yourself if you think that's going to happen. So, um, I'm not going to let that dissuade me from doing what I need to do. I buy used, but the price of a used one is actually not really very compelling. <laughs> I've been looking at used ones, and like I said, um, in, uh, in the current market, buying a used one is, um, is just short of a waste of money, um, because you're going to pay more than what you've gained in a used vehicle, a used pickup truck in, the, in this case, um, than you would if you bought a brand new one. And um, deferred maintenance expenses and things like that. You know, it's a uh, missing screw. I can't leave it that way. 
I don't know why there's a screw missing, but there is. Here we go. Let's put it back in.